This is the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Uh, So, it's good to be with you again this morning, folks. We are in the second installment of a series called Take My Yoke. And obviously, (coughs) excuse me, it's from the passage out of Matthew that I just read. Jesus is out and he's doing some teaching and the crowds are there. And a lot of those folks that followed him were desperate people. They were hurting people. They were sick. They were the marginal people. Uh, And so, he sees people who are just weary and so he says that take my yoke upon you and learn from me you will find rest so i want to talk about that um, get into that a little bit more with you today but first i want to give you some good news i know uh at, at this recording at the time of this recording anyway we have not had the definitive um call for the presidential campaign i think there's still some legal matters that are being adjudicated uh, and so it's not kind of final final and people wish it were including me but that being said I have some good news because there is in fact a very important election that has been successfully concluded and that is the election of Wilbur the French Bulldog. He is the mayor of Rabbit Hash, Kentucky. Population about 500 apparently that they've had a tradition of of voting for dogs to be their mayor. Obviously the mayor job is not too terrible. Uh, Doesn't involve too much difficult math uh, and that sort of thing. So uh, apparently Wilbur's a good candidate. And frankly, as I look around the landscape of, of available politicians, I'm not sure Wilbur wouldn't be uh, a better choice for higher office than mayor of, of Rabbit Hash, Kentucky, because let's face it, um, wow. Anyhow, I have to say, you know, we're a mighty country of over 300 million people some of the most gifted, brilliant people in the world. And when you look at the choices we have, you gotta go, really? This, these are our choices? Anyway, but I digress. I just resonated with this passage and this verse in particular, come to me, all you that are weary and you're carrying heavy burdens. Let me say, pretty much everybody that I run into these days fits this description, amen? Like, I wonder how many of you would say, at some level, this is you. Weary and carrying heavy burdens. And Jesus is speaking to you and me. If that's you, Jesus is speaking to us right now. Because it's me, for sure. I will give you rest. Um, I was looking through an article this week in the Wall Street Journal, and this is about worker burnout. Uh, It says, a few months into the pandemic, a guy named Nick Popoff let his guard down in an all-hands video call and said aloud what many had been experiencing. He felt burned out. Some weeks, the engineering director at Eventbrite didn't leave his house for days. Um, Slack notifications buzzed his phone constantly. He missed seeing his friends and colleagues in person. And I'm going to go amen and amen. There's something about in person uh, I really miss, even in my work context. Um, It's just something we're missing there. Um, After Popoff shared his experience in the meeting, other colleagues came forward saying they too felt exhausted by work and life in a pandemic. And then here's a quote. There's this second wave upon us where people are feeling super anxious that this is the new normal, and thinking how much longer can we sustain this? I don't think we've yet come to grips with the mental impact this is having on all of us. And I just say, amen and amen. I mean, let's face it, none of us thought this was gonna still be going when it first came on our radar at the beginning of the year, but the fact that we are, and who knew that when you worked from home, you were actually gonna work more, not less. I don't know why, I just, I didn't see that. I I didn't see that coming, but that's kind of how that's working out. And I guess maybe because we don't have a commute, which is great, I don't like traffic, but 
you know, we don't have a commute, and it's just easy. It's easy to just go into your workspace and just start working. Work, check your email, right? Work on a project, whatever. It's so simple. It's so easy. It's like too easy. It's hard to make boundaries there. Um, and I can certainly tell you it's affected me um, more than I care to admit. Uh, last time we were doing uh, worship here, we were standing behind the altar and Cheryl looked down at my shoes and she said, you know, Ernie, you're wearing two different pair of shoes right now. <laughs> now, I thought, mm, now they're similar, right? But still, they are definitely two different pair of shoes. Do you know how many times I've done that in my 54 years of life? Once. And it was a week ago. Seriously. And I... I would be lying if I said that's the first kind of weird thing that I caught myself doing or thing. Like, there's a hundred of these things, right? Like, there's a whole long list of ways and things that I can tell. Like, man, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm missing a couple cylinders here. Like, I'm not working on a full. Like, I'm missing a couple nuggets out of the Happy Meal. You know what I'm saying? A couple fries, you know, from from the from the Big Mac meal. Like, I, I I'm missing some stuff, and. Um, would you say that's you, by the way? Have you ever, have you caught yourself in the last few months, like, just not all there, and you're thinking, oh my gosh, like, that shouldn't happen. I'm not as mentally sharp, and I can tell you I'm more tired than usual, just physically, but I can tell also it's not about physical, right? There's, a, there's an internal tired, there, there's weariness of soul, weariness of spirit, which is Jesus is talking about, and so he comes and he says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. So there's a couple of important things. One of them is he's referring to this apparatus, which would have been very familiar to ancient culture, which is less familiar to you and me. It's used on farms and agricultural things, right? Where you hook, hook you connect two beasts of burden, usually like two ox, although you can have these kinds of things for horses and other large animals, but still this is more for an ox. But the idea is that the, this apparatus helps helps the animals pull in the same direction, right? So you're, you're maximizing your effectiveness because you're pairing two animals to work together. So Jesus is saying, look, I'm on one side of that yoke and I want you on the other side. I know you're weary and I know you're tired and guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to pull for both of us. That's what the Lord's inviting us, you and me. He says, I know you're tired. I know you're like you're on your knees, like you don't think you could go another step. I get it. Take my yoke and I'll pull for the both of us. And I'm like, sign me up, Jesus, right? Like, oh my gosh, yes, yes, yes. How do I get on this thing, Jesus? Tell me. What do I got to do to get on the other side of that yoke so you can pull? And I can rest. How do I do that? Well, taking Jesus' yoke means living Jesus' way. And the Bible also tells us that the Lord's ways are not our ways. In fact, it says, take my yoke and learn from me. Do you know what that means? It means you don't know how to live like Jesus wants you to live right out, right out the womb. Like, you have to learn these things. We have to be taught these things. It's something that we do over a period of time, over a period of years. As we take Jesus' yoke, we learn to live Jesus' way. And that's what I want to be doing over the next few weeks, is helping us take some pieces that are really helpful, I think, for us right now, in this day, in this time, in this context. What does it mean to live Jesus' way? Okay, so we're going to go, the first one is today. The first part is this, practice number one, trusting God with my time. Jesus would often be found spending time with God the Father. And sometimes he would go by himself, and other times he would take the disciples with him, and they would watch him, and they'd see what he did. And over time they learned how to do it because they watched Jesus. And of course what we know is when Jesus ascended to heaven and he wasn't there anymore, guess what the disciples did? they taught other people just like Jesus had taught them. You with me on that? Right, so we're talking imitation. They're showing Jesus. 
or Jesus is showing them how to live. And this is what it says in Mark chapter 1. This is part of how Jesus, Jesus' way of living. In the morning, while it was still very dark, Jesus got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. Now, the first thing I don't like about this verse is when this is happening. It says, in the morning, while it was still very dark. Now, here's the truth. Some of you people have this incredibly weird rhythm where you're up with the chickens. It's not even near sunrise, and you're already doing a whole bunch of stuff. Like, look, if the Lord wanted you to be up before the sun, uh, I was going somewhere with that, but I completely lost it. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about right here early in the morning how many of you are early morning people my wife is an early morning person she's up like at five or even before five every single day which is just bonkers to me how many of you are not early morning people you are my people right if jesus wanted us to be up earlier the sun would come up earlier amen that's right Cheryl's another one of these people. I don't know what is with you people. And don't let it go to your head that apparently Jesus was also one of these people. Because I know what you people think. Well, when we enter the kingdom, everybody's going to be an early riser. Because we're all going to be like Jesus. I don't agree. Anyhow. You know, logic and reason are not what they're cracked up to be sometimes. He went up before anything else in his day. Getting serious here. Don't miss this. He didn't do this at lunchtime. He didn't do this at the end of the day. He did this at the very beginning of the day. Before he did a bunch of other stuff. And he was a busy guy. Okay? He went lots of places. People were coming at him constantly. Wanting to hear his teaching. Wanting him to heal them. Wanting him to cast out demons. Wanting him to do all kinds of things. They had constantly demanded things from him. He had people with him pretty much all the time. And yet, he got up before any of that. And spent time with God the Father. And when we talk about that, we're talking about time in prayer, as it says here. But Jesus also knew the scripture. He reflected on the scripture. Now, he didn't have the whole Bible, of course, because the New Testament wasn't there, right? Because that's what starts with the Gospels and then after that. But the Old Testament was there, right? The, the, the law and the prophets and the wisdom literature, the Psalms, the Proverbs, that's all there. And so he's in the word and he is in prayer to the Father every single morning. In the morning, while it was still dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place and there he prayed. Part of what it means, part of what it means to live Jesus' way. Here's practice number one, right? Trust God with my time. We all know we should pray. We all know we should be in the scriptures. We all know that we should, even when we get a chance, worship and other things. We all know, if you're a Christian, you understand that that's part of, part of the rhythm of a Christian. But here's the truth. A lot of us just don't do it. And especially when things get busy like they are now, when we feel overwhelmed, right? We're already taxed. Like there's already too many demands on your time. For not everybody, but for a lot of you who are watching this right now, that's just you. So the idea, the idea that you're going to add something, like Ernie, are you kidding me right now? Do you not understand? Okay, I'm burning out. I have no time. My day is packed. It's stressful. This is a wonderful idea, but Jesus was the Son of God. I am not. I don't have the time. You ever said that? You know what the number one reason why people don't do this practice? They tell me, I would, but I don't have the time. Here's a crazy idea. Okay, don't, don't miss this. Because I knew... If you had the time, if you had the space in your life and rhythm to be with the Lord before your day began, you probably would. But right now, you think you can't. But here's the deal. As I trust God with my time, what if I gave to God time I don't think I have? 
What if I trusted the Lord and did something crazy and gave the Lord five or ten minutes or maybe even 15 at the very beginning of my day? Would it wreck my day? Like, what, would it take a, a, a difficult day and make it even worse? Or maybe, or maybe, in trusting the Lord with that bit of time, the Lord would meet me in that space and bless me and speak to me and give to me a sense of peace in the midst of a tumultuous world that's full of anxiety and fears right now. What if God could give you life if you just trusted him with a little bit more of your time? In Isaiah 55, God said this, as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until we have water, they've watered the earth, so shall my word that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose. Do you know what the word of God does? It does a lot of things, but here's the number one thing. The word of God, the logos of God, right? That gets released into the world. <coughs> the word of God gives life. Look at the book of Genesis in the very beginning. It says, and God spoke right out onto the chaos and God created the heavens of the earth and God said let there be light and there was light and let there be creatures on the earth and let there be a sky and let there be all the constellations and let there be the animals of the earth right that word created the creation that we know today it brought life he blew life into Adam and then Eve and then later on in the prophets, the word of God came and was spoken through the prophets to the people that gave them life, like this passage from the prophet Isaiah. Later on, we're told in the Gospel of John that in the beginning was the word. What word is that, Ernie? The word that was present in Genesis, the word that was present in the, uh, in the prophets is now present. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the wor word was God. And there came this child who grew to be a man named Jesus, who was the word of God, the life-giving power, creative power of God, came to life in flesh and blood in someone named Jesus. And that word comes to us even today. When we read this word, you're not just reading words printed on a page, people. Okay, this isn't like reading the news, reading the newspaper, reading a magazine. This is the word of God. And God says, if you will read my word, if you'll listen to my word, if you'll receive my word, it's not going to return empty. It's going to give you life. It's going to give you hope. It's going to give you pathway. <coughs> it's going to give you wisdom. Man, we are so, we are confronted with so many unknowns right now in every area of life. How in the world are you supposed to navigate that? You think you're smart enough to figure all that out by yourself? Good luck with that. The word of God is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That's in the Proverbs. If you'll give the Lord just a little bit of your time, you won't regret it. I promise you, you won't regret it. So what does that look like? Well, there's a couple of different ways I want to hold up for you. By the way, there's a lot more than this, but I'm just giving you two. <coughs> One is the daily word. Me and Cheryl and Aaron take turns, and sometimes Katrina does that too, right? But we take turns, and we're bringing you some scripture, and we're reflecting on that with you, wrestling it with you, and then we pray together, right? It's not that long. It's maybe 10 minutes or so, give or take, every morning, Monday through Saturday at 1030 Central Time AM, right? Um, Man, all you got to do is click into the Rejoice Facebook page, and there it is. And if you like the page, it'll even show up in your notifications. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, it's there for you. Or we also have a dedicated page on Facebook called the Rejoice Daily Scripture page. If you go put that into the search, you'll find it. Tell us you want to get in, and you'll get that every single day. In fact, more of us, me and and Cheryl and Linda and maybe even others at some time, right? There's multiple people reading scripture with you and giving you reflection and prayer. It's there for you. Like we've prepackaged this thing, man. 
Like, you don't have to go in the kitchen and make the whole meal from scratch. Like, we're, we're packaging it for you. Come on, man. You can do this. And it'll bless you. I promise it'll bless you. And if you want a little help, there's an email address at the bottom there, Cheryl at RejoiceLutheran.org. Cheryl loves nothing more than to help people get started on a path of leaning into the Lord and hearing from the Word of God and praying to the Lord. Isn't that right, Cheryl? Like there's nothing she'd rather do on any day than to help you get connected with the Lord. Like seriously. And me too, frankly. That's what we do. That's why we're here. We want you to hear the Word speak and pray and fill you when you're ready to take on the rest of your day. Let's pray together. Lord, these are tough times. There's a lot going on. A lot of us are challenged in multiple areas of life, all at the same time, any one of which could overwhelm a normal person. So we need you, Lord. These challenging times, in part, what it does, Lord, is it exposes the weaknesses in us. It exposes our frailty, our, our finitude. It, it, it reveals to us how much we need you, Lord. And so we just admit that today. And Lord Jesus, as we take on your yoke, teach us to join you early in the morning, while it's still dark, to be in prayer and in scripture with God the Father. Give us grace, Lord, to do that. Give us grace to trust you, Lord, with time that we think we don't have. And thank you in advance for, for the blessing that comes when we trust you. And we pray in Jesus' name, amen.